Hey guys, what's up? Redactions here and welcome back to this brand new video. And today we are at Raceway Van Rai for the fourth round of the Dutch Stella 74 series. Yeah, we are back once again after our race in Emma. I really enjoyed it. And now we are back at another new track, which is Raceway Van Rai, like I said. Now, normally this is actually a car circuit, but like actually inside of the uh, the, the car circuit there, you, you, they, they can basically put a karting circuit there. So that's really cool. So yeah, it will be another new track for us this weekend. And uh, yeah, let's get settled and uh, let's go. Boom! We are back in the tent of Team Pit Parts, and as you can see, we have quite a few Tillotson drivers for this weekend, all because of my videos, of course. Boom, guys! This is the track. Yeah, usually this is an oval circuit, as you can see. That's why we have such a big ass grandstand over here. But uh, yeah, I'm really curious to see what the layout is because I know the normal layout, I've seen it on video, so I know that by heart, but now we actually have the special layout, so that's going to be cool. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to it. And uh, kind of strange to have such a, yeah, like I said, big ass grandstand over here. But yeah, kind of makes it a very unique track. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back aboard the Tillotson T4 Senior Kart. A brand new four-stroke concept which aims to revolutionize uh, professional level karting whilst keeping the prices low. Uh, yeah, it's a really cool concept. I really like driving it. Um, if you're unfamiliar with it, go check out the video in the top right hand corner in which I kind of explain how everything works and the specs of this class. Uh, definitely recommend it. Also, if you're aiming to uh, start karting, the Tillotson T4 series is not a bad place to start. Anyways, we're also at a brand new track, uh, Raceway Van Rij, a uh, auto speedway or oval track for cars, um, which also happens to be a car track. So let's start a hot lap of it now, going into a uh, turn one and two, which is a uh, very fast left-hander which flows into a hairpin, which we a little, uh, overcook a little bit there. Then into a small right-hand kink, into a double apex uh, right-hand uh, medium speed hairpin, flowing into two very slow left and then right hairpins. This is actually a special layout. The normal layout doesn't have this and it actually goes the other way around. Then going into the stadium section here, uh, another hairpin uh, which flows into a uh, flowing chicane, which is a, actually a quadruple chicane. Left, right, right, left. Uh, really cool, it's actually flat out in this car, so that's cool. You can take a lot of curb there as well. Then onto the back straight, flowing into another really fast chicane, and then into my favorite corner of the whole track. A very fast left-hand hairpin, which is actually, or is it really a hairpin? I don't know, it's more like a U-turn. Uh, then going up uh, into some elevation changes, which flows to another right-hand hairpin, which actually drops down quite a bit, you don't really see it on camera. And here we have another uh, few hairpins, left, right, uh, right, left. And that's a level of uh, Raceway Van Rijn on a special layout. I actually really enjoy this uh, track. It's one of my favorites so far. Uh, it, it just has a nice rhythm to it. I don't really know how to explain it. It just flows really nicely. The happens into each other. And um, your racing line actually makes a huge difference in lap time here. Then going on to the uh, end of the session already, you can see that we're overtaking a slower card, which is an RK1 card, which is an old four-stroke uh, engine, which is not produced anymore but at the uh, Dutch Tillotson T4 series, which races under the license of uh, the Dutch NXT series, both of which you should follow on Instagram, by the way, they're on screen right now. Uh, yeah, in this championship, the uh, RK1 engine still uh, is alive and well, even though uh, it's not produced anymore for a couple of years now. Uh, in practice, um, we were actually sharing the track because the speed is uh, sort of similar. We're a little bit quicker in the corners, they're a little bit quicker on the straights, but uh, yeah, the speed is uh, similar enough for us so that it's safe to uh, be on the track together. Anyways, uh, skipping ahead one session, you can already see that, that we are gaining quite a lot of time on our previous best. Uh, we ended the last session with a 58.8 and now here you can see that we're almost a second up, which is uh, quite a lot, but I also wasn't really feeling that the card was performing at its best uh, setup wise, so um, I definitely thought that there's uh, some time to be gained. And as you can see, that we get held up by one of the RK1 cards and then he bolts away on the straight because they have a little bit more power. Did a 58.7, which is already a little bit of an improvement over the last heat, um, but I feel like there was definitely some more time to be gained in my driving, which we uh, show here by going another uh, three tenths quicker than our previous best. Uh, covering behind the steering wheel there to make ourselves more aerodynamic and getting more top speed, we now set a 58.2. So uh, yeah, we're definitely gaining some time on ourselves there just by driving, but like I said, I felt like there was definitely some time to be gained in the setup, so that's why I came into the pits here after 10 laps, uh, asked one of the mechanics to show the tire pressure, which was uh, 1.04, which is a little bit uh, on the high side for my liking. So I asked him to drop it to 0.9, which is only about a tenth and a half difference. But in karting, and especially in the T4 series, tire pressure is everything. A large part of the speed is actually um, 
determined by how much air you have in the tires. And it's it's a really that's one of the things that I love about karting. It's not just about your ability, but also or your ability uh, as a driver, but also um, your ability to understand the feedback that the kart is giving you. And I felt like it was saying that the tire pressure was too high because it was sliding. And here you can see after we lower the tire pressure immediately after three quarters, we're already gaining like. Uh, one and a half tenths there, yeah, well, well two tenths already. You can see it on the bottom right hand side of our lap timer there. That's how much we're going quicker after just one lap of coming out of the pit. So we even have a little bit of cold tires. So lowering the tire pressure definitely, definitely was the correct choice here. You can see that, that, that we're getting even more time going almost three tenths quicker now. Then into the left right chicane, into our favorite corner. You can also see how much more calm the steering wheel is because the car was just working with me so much better. Uh, we lost a little bit of time there actually because we were slower. Then going into the uh, last technical bit, here you can also see that we're just gaining ever so slightly, uh, using all the track available, going through the corners nice and calmly, because actually with most cars it is actually quicker to be driving a little bit under the limit than over it, and that's definitely what was the case here. And we end the session with a uh, low 58 there, so that's really good, and uh, I think that's a good start of the day for us. guys, yeah, first two sessions done, uh, pretty good. Uh, managed to do a 58.1, my teammate did a 58.0. So we still have to find a little bit of time. Um, but I found a solution for that, we're going out with all of the teammates uh, the next session. So uh, there's going to be some nice battling and some nice slipstreaming. But yeah, all in all, it's going quite well. Card feels really good. I really like the way this thing feels out on track. It's super light, super nimble, it's, yeah, really cool. And uh, yeah, two more sessions to go now for the day, and uh, let's uh, see what we can do in those. Hello there. <laughs> This is for my vlog. Oh. It's so, called the camera. <laughs> yeah, that's what she said. <laughs> Alright guys, time for the final two sessions of the day. And for this session, we together with the team Pit Parts, uh, we decided to go out on track with all three uh, T4 senior drivers. Um, one thing that I have to say, of course, I usually race in Rotex, um, which is a little bit higher level than the T4 series at the moment. And uh, I really could tell that by the way that uh, the drivers are behaving in practice. Usually when we're at a BNL or a Dutch Championship for Rotex, um, everyone drives in groups. Um, we do that so that we can kind of see where we are gaining and losing time and kind of have a fight already. But here no one was doing that. So I kind of went to my teammates and was like, yo, uh, we should drive together because then we can really see where our strengths and weaknesses are because actually my two teammates, they were uh, quite quick as well. And I really had to uh, get my foot down there to be faster than them. And it, it's just useful to drive together. Here you can see uh, the number eight cars. I believe it's number eight. I can't really see. It's no oh, number 18, that's Yuri. Um, He's an experienced T4 driver as well. He was racing with us in uh, the last round in Emmen. Um, and he was one of the quicker guys. And, bef uh, and the car ahead is uh, Stefan. And he was uh, brand new to the T4 series. He's actually rocking a brand new car. He overtakes us on the left there. Um, and yeah, he was, his car was actually so new that the uh, stickers or the livery stickers hadn't really been put on there. And he was really quick too. But I do have to say he was running a little bit underweight. So most of his time was gained on accelerating out of the corners. Uh, and when you're under weight, of, uh, underweight, so I can't speak anymore. And when you're underweight, of course, it gives a little bit of a, uh, yeah, not correct view of how quick you are. There you can see we did a beautiful switchback move and we overtake him into the double left chicane. But even though he was a little bit underweight, I definitely saw that we had some uh, pace in there. So here I took the lead of the group, uh, kind of showed them to follow me here. I was a little bit annoyed that I was lacking straight line speed because, of course, when you're underweight, you also have more straight line speed. Um, but at this time, I didn't really know that he was underweight. So, yeah, I was a little bit frustrated with that. He was pointing at my engine like, yeah, it's not going. but. Trust me, it was quick enough, he was just on the way. Um, so yeah, here I take the lead of the group to kind of show them my line through there and um, to kind of show them what I did on track because actually in the corners I was the fastest guy out of the tent or out of the team. Uh, here I decided to let them all pass again and see if I can uh, maybe close the gap to them because um, actually the best way to set a lap in practice is by uh, having some drivers that are a little bit slower ahead of you and trying to close the gap, uh, which is what we're doing here. As our teammate there has a little bit of an oops moment by going over the sideboard of the other guy. Uh, yeah, that's a uh, fast lap out of the window. But I think uh, for me, and especially for them, this session was really, really useful. 
because uh, we all got some valuable track time there, uh, not just driving around in circles, but actually learning from each other, seeing where we are getting and losing time, and uh, having some nice battle out on track, which is really important if you want to have a good feeling going into the uh, race day. All right, guys, yeah, that's the end of the day. Pretty good, I think uh, we are the fastest on track. End of the day with a 57.5, so that's quite quick. Uh, now it's time to get ready for tomorrow, because it's only three o'clock. Uh, yeah, the day's ended quite early, so uh, time to work on the cart. And uh, actually, I've got something important. Boom, definitely some tents there. Yeah, I, I myself don't drink, um, but I uh, gave this to the team as a thank you that I can be here. So yeah, let's uh, make some friends with the team boss. <laughs> It's all done. Yeah, it took actually quite long. It took three hours or something. But uh, yeah, we fitted the slick tires for tomorrow. But um, maybe that's the wrong choice for tires because it is raining and it is also forecast to be raining for tomorrow. So yeah. But you guys don't know this room, and that is because uh, well, it's new and we have a uh, bed and breakfast for this weekend. Actually, really cool. Look at this room. I think we will have a comfortable stay in here. I actually don't know what's here. Let's check it. Oh, well, this is very nice. Cheers. Alrighty guys, good morning. It is Sunday and that means that it is race day. And like I showed you yesterday, it was raining, but we woke up this morning and no rain. So yeah, I think the track is going to be still a little bit wet, but not like completely drenched. So I hope it is half half again and that we can go over slicks because then we are really strong in those conditions. So we have breakfast in uh yeah, a couple of minutes, so let's see how that is. Better klein zone. Yeah, close. All right, registration, briefing, and after that, time for the warm-up. All right, we've done the registration. Now it's time for the briefing, which is actually on the main straight of the big oval. So. Uh, yeah, that's pretty cool. And by the way, look at this banking. Yeah, it's pretty insane, right? I think it's like 20 degrees or something. I don't know. But pretty cool. Let's wait for the briefing. Alrighty guys, welcome to qualifying. Uh, as you can see, we have now switched to the different helmet cam because I was actually not allowed to use the GoPro in the races and the qualifying. Uh, here you can see the results of the warm-up and uh, you can see that, that we definitely uh, had a little bit of a pace advantage. 57.6, uh, then P2 58.0 and then P3 59.0. Uh, yeah, the track was still a little bit damp. Uh, and as you guys know, when the track is damp and we are on slicks, I am just in my element for some reason. I'm really confident in these conditions even though that's quite contradictory because having slicks on a wet track usually works the other way around for most drivers that removes confidence but for some reason i just get more confident when that happens and then in qualifying also the track was a little bit damp so i knew that we can uh, really set a good lap time which we are going to ride on board with now you can see that, that we took a lot of curb into turn one um, and yeah this lap was just almost perfect you can see that, that i'm really giving some calm inputs into the cart, which is really important, especially in uh, things like the Tillerson T4 series or in the Rotex Max cart, which I uh, drive in uh, my normal occupation, let's say it like that. Um, yeah, it's just so important to be very, very smooth. And that is because carts have a huge amount of grip compared to their power. So you can imagine that uh, when you don't really have that much power, every steering input that you make uh, is actually too much or every extra steering input that you make is too much. So. In order for you to uh, maintain more corner speed, you want to keep the steering wheel as straight as possible, which is definitely what we did here. You can see almost no corrections on the steering wheel. Uh, and we were basically just turning the cart by using our pedals. Um, and my theory worked. Uh, we did a 58.5 there, which is a really quick lap time. And actually, um, on the uh, timing sheets of the uh, official results, it's classified as a 58.4. Now, why is that possible? The transponder, which is uh, used to uh, uh, measure our official times, uh, takes the time from a different point than the lap timer on our steering wheel. 
So that's why we uh, have a 57.4 there, which is enough to secure pole position, which is really cool, by the way. Uh, yeah, a really big difference to P2, so we definitely, definitely are the fastest car out here this weekend. We mastered the setup, uh, we mastered the tire pressure, and we mastered the driving and the track. So um, yeah, really uh, happy with that result. Let's see what we can do in the first race. All right, guys, that was a warm up in the qualifying. P1 in both sessions, so it's pretty good. In the warm up, we actually had half a second to P2 and then one and a half seconds to P3, so we were really quick in the warm up. But in qualifying, the gaps were a little bit closer, as you saw. But uh, yeah, car feels good. Let's go into the first race. Alright guys, welcome to the first heat. We're starting on pole position for the third time this season. Uh, now of course we still have to do it in Rotex, but uh, that's a little bit more difficult. Uh, we roll into the tram lines now, going very slowly, and then suddenly we decide to floor it. So uh, that we can get our uh, P2 guy there off guard, which we kind of do. We get a really good start, we keep P1 into turn 1. I kind of bunch up the field there, hoping that my teammates can overtake P2. Because it's really nice to have some rear cover from my teammates. Because of course your teammates are a little bit more careful when they're racing you. and. Uh, yeah, I just knew I was the fastest guy out on track. Um, we tried something else with the tire pressure uh, by going up a little bit, uh, but that actually uh, ended up not being the correct choice because when you go up on tire pressure, um, you basically, uh, you, you, you don't really create more grip or more temperature. You basically just uh, move the part of the race in which you are quick. So if you go up a little bit, you're very quick in the beginning of the race. Uh, and a little bit less in the end. Uh, so I kind of gambled on being a little bit, uh, that I was a little bit slower in the beginning of the race, which actually makes no sense because on cold tires, I'm actually quite quick. Um, but I, uh, yeah, on the advice of the team, I kind of went up on tire pressure because all of the other drivers were running a little bit higher uh, up in tire pressure. But for some reason, it just didn't really work that well for me. Going on to lap two now, uh, yeah, we're still in P1 of course, but what you guys are not able to see is that behind us, uh, cutting onto lap 6 and uh, going on to lap 7 now, behind us uh, P2 was like this close. Um, but because we were just a little bit later on the brakes than him everywhere, he just couldn't really attack. As you can see there we do a 57.5, which is a really quick lap time by the way, almost as quick as what we did in qualifying. Um, but yeah, um, it wasn't really feeling uh, that nice to drive as well, you can see there that we are kind of wobbling around a little bit. We're having minor corrections on the steering wheel, which is what we definitely didn't have there in uh, qualifying. Taking a lot of curb in the chicane because it was allowed. You were actually allowed to cut it really far, which is uh, really enjoyable to do for some reason. Uh, but yeah, we are still in P1, uh, lap seven out of 10. Uh, going ahead a little bit later on, we are still in P1 when it's uh, lap 10, but still uh, P2 is this close behind. So we have to defend here because otherwise he would definitely have mounted the move, or at least that's what I would have done. Uh, yeah, going defensive into all of these hairpins here, it's really hard to overtake it, but better be safe than sorry. We hit the sausage curb there on the inside, but it is enough to keep P1 for the first heat of the day. So that's not a race win in the back for us there. Um, I believe that's the uh, fourth of the season now. And uh, yeah, you can see there that in the end, uh, we didn't actually get the fastest lap. Uh, Tim van Ellerswijk, P2, was a little bit quicker than us. Um, and he only finished a tenth and a half behind us, which is really close. But like I said, um, yeah, I made a little bit of a mistake with the tire pressure, so we weren't really living up to our full potential. We still won the race, so that's a little bit lucky. Uh, but I definitely felt like if we uh, didn't gamble wrong on the tire pressure, that uh, we definitely could have gone a little bit more out of it there. But hey, I didn't have a mechanic, so I had, had to manage all of that by myself, so I think we did okay there. All right, that was the first race. Must have been quite a boring one to watch because uh, yeah, we got uh, P1 there and we were leading the entire race. Um, but to be honest, it was not that boring when I was in the cart because Tim was right behind me for like pretty much the whole race. So in the last lap I had to defend a little bit, but after that, yeah, P1. So now we have a lunch break and after that race too. So uh, yeah, let's see how that goes. Oh, nice. Nice. Alright guys, heat 2. Of course we are starting from pole position again because we won the previous heat, we roll onto the grid now. Uh, there's no fire red lights, there's a flag on the left there and away we go. There you can see that we actually get a uh, 
pretty good start which allows our teammate to get up to p2 and the other teammate to get up to p3 so we are currently a pit part one two three that's really good so i kind of signaled them to follow me follow me because i knew that tim was a little bit quicker than my teammates uh, so i hoped that they could just follow me use my slipstream use my lines to kind of uh, follow me and to uh, really uh, solidify or solidify i don't know uh, that one two three for the team which would have been a really cool result of course um yeah, in this race we changed a little bit on the setup. I actually took quite a big risk with the setup. But as you guys are probably able to tell after this, um, that risk paid off big time. Uh, I can't really say too much yet, you will of course see it uh, by yourself. But it, uh, it's actually, we already have a gap that was so large that we didn't even have to defend into this braking zone, that's good. Uh, we could really just take the ideal line everywhere. Uh, we were also a little bit lucky that P2, 3 and 4 were battling. Uh, and I of course just had clear track ahead of us, so I could just Bolt away, you can see there the gap a little bit. Uh, it's already a few card lengths, so that's good. Uh, going into turn one again, you can see that, that we opened the race already with a 50, uh, 59.2, which is a really quick lap time. Then going ahead to uh, lap five, uh, we are just so consistent, improving our best lap every single lap. We were just getting quicker as the race went on, which is really cool. The cards felt absolutely unreal. So you can see there how calm the steering inputs are. Um, yeah, it, it just was a joy to drive this thing. And also because it is so light and nimble, it's just so enjoyable to drive this thing when it's on rails. There, ducking behind the steering wheel, going on to lap 6 now. You can see that we set a 57.4 on our uh, Micron lap timer, which is the quickest that we have been this weekend. And uh, by at this point in the race, the gap behind me was already like 3 or 4 seconds. So we were... So we built up a gap of about 3 seconds in 6 laps, so that means that we were pulling away by half a second each lap, which is quite a lot. But here we come around the final corner, have a look behind me, there's absolutely no one there. We won the race uh, in a very, very dominant way. Uh, we've had P1 in every session so far, so that's really cool. And this time you see, we're a lot quicker than the rest. Uh, the setup gamble definitely paid off here. Uh, we had a, almost a 5 second gap to P2, and yeah, it just felt amazing to drive that race uh, even though it was a little bit boring for you guys to watch believe me I, w I w had a big smile like that uh, underneath that crash helmet for the entire race and it, yeah it, it was just very enjoyable to drive that one unfortunately we didn't really get any battles but uh, yeah sometimes wins like that are also nice. all right guys race one p1 race two p1 but uh, now we're preparing for race three and uh, look at this it is forecast to be raining exactly when our start is, so we are preparing everything. Um, I put my wets in there, I put air in there, I also put more air into the slicks because if it's half-half, I like to gamble on slicks with a lot of air in them. And uh, yeah, let's see uh, what will happen. So guys, heat 3, very, very exciting because it's actually forecast to be raining right when the start hits. Uh, yeah, we roll onto the grid now, the flag drops and away we go and already you can see the drops of rain are starting to drop onto the visor. Like I said um, in the vlog part, I put more air into the tires but because it was not really raining yet when we were on the pre-grid, I decided to take a huge risk and uh, let almost all of the extra air out of the tires that I put in there. I basically uh, put it on exactly the same tire pressure that we had been running in the dry. Um, and in the beginning of the race, when the rain was not really falling that hard, that was no problem. You can see here that the car still feels kind of okay, even though it is uh, drizzling down a little bit. I definitely noticed here already that this race was going to be tough because, um, yeah, the car felt okay, um, but when it is raining and there are slicks you always want to have more pressure in the tires because that way the temperature gets in there sooner um, because it just takes less energy to warm up those tires and when it is raining and there's a layer of water between the tire and the surface uh, it kind of acts as a lubricant which puts less energy into the tires here you can see that we already had to defend going into turn one because behind me uh, the guys they gambled on a higher tire pressure like by a lot so i was definitely on the back foot here uh, and I had to defend also here, you can see us looking behind us, insane, an insane amount there, which is something I usually do. Here you can see that uh, P2 goes for the overtake, but we kind of shove him out wide there and force him onto the grass, which is really hard racing, but hey, that's karting in my opinion. Um, so we keep P1 for now, but it was a little bit of a cheeky move. Then going into the second uh, 
or the second time into the corner. You can see that we take a lot of curb in order to uh, help the car rotating. And you can see that another person tries to sneak up the inside. We do a very aggressive move there to the right with our steering wheel. We don't touch him, but it was very aggressive. And that's just the best way to get someone off your inside by just pretending as if you're going to turn in very hard because usually that will scare him off. Then going on to lap 8, we are still in P1. We have been defending from almost the entire race because we were just too slow. And look at this. How much understeer is that? Um, yeah, the rain was falling down very hard at the moment and the more it started raining the more we started struggling because like i said we gambled on a complete dry setup and the others did not uh, so here you can see we're just crabbing throughout the entire uh, slow section we have no grip whatsoever the cart is very une uh, uneasy and it's just very difficult to drive at this point here you can see that they're all over me at this point i had to defend again going into turn one here again uh, i just understeer wide uh, which allows uh, P2, Tim van Alsvijk to go through there, he forces, us, he forces us off track now, so we got a little bit of a taste of our own medicine. In my opinion, that's just hard racing, I gave him no space, he gives me no space, all fair in my book. But unfortunately the stewards had a little bit of a different idea about that, and we actually both ended up getting a 5 second penalty for that, which in my opinion... Yeah, just let us race, man. It, 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 he gained by it. He's in P1 now, I'm in P4. We lost even more positions, but that's not the way the stewards looked at it, unfortunately. And they decide who gets penalties, so really nothing we could do about it. It's just that, in my opinion, it was not really correct to give us a penalty, both of us a penalty there. Um, but hey, at least they were consistent by giving both of us a penalty instead of giving just him or just me a penalty. Um, but yeah, you can see here that we were definitely uh, struggling to keep up there. But you can see there that a left card is getting in the way, which kind of gives us another chance to be really close to them. Um, yeah, it's just difficult. And also one thing that I noticed as we take a whole lot of uh, sausage curb there. In the uh, slow corners, we were definitely suffering more than in the fast corners. Here in these technical bits, uh, yeah, we were just struggling but then again in a fast corner like this in which we take a lot of entry speed i was actually able to warm up the tires a little bit by just making the cart understeer which i'm doing intentionally there but in a slow speed corner it doesn't really work as you can see it just gives us oversteer but in a fast corner uh, in the wet when it is draining uh, raining a little bit it really works to make the cart understeer and by that warm up the uh, front tires as you can see that p2 and p3 are having an absolutely ding dong battle p2 is our teammate yuri and p3 is timer which is not our teammate so i was kind of rooting for yuri there to keep p2 uh, because i knew that p1 had a penalty here so i knew that yuri technically wasn't p1 and here you can see a perfect example of how it works to make the cart understeer there you can definitely see that we can get on the power early and that we are now gaining on P3 ahead of us in the fast corners. But in the slow corners I just had absolutely nothing to fight with. So now it was just a matter of um, compensating for the penalty, making sure the gap behind us doesn't get too small. We definitely had a large enough gap so that the 5 second penalty would not affect us. Uh, but yeah, we were just struggling throughout these corners. You can see that we just had no grip and we had to settle for P4 there. Uh, which is yeah, of course not ideal considering that we won all of the races so far. Uh, but yeah. In the end, the uh, gamble on the uh, low tire pressure and the uh, dry setup definitely did not pay off. Um, yeah, really stupid when I look back on it because every indication said that it would be raining for the rest of the race. But because it was uh, not raining yet when we were on the pre-grid, I made the rest decision to uh, change back to the dry setup, which is, uh, of course, turned out not to be the best option but hey we learned from it and I definitely won't be making that mistake again in the future so let's see who is P1 after all the heats well guys what a race um, yeah you definitely saw that we gambled wrong in terms of tire pressure yeah I just had no grip that's unfortunate and also I got a five second penalty for unsportsmanlike driving same as P1 because we both pushed each other off and so in our mind it was fair but it wasn't according to the stewards so that's not nice so now we actually don't know who the winner is, and yeah, we'll see that later. Now uh, let's watch some other races. I'm not filmed in. I can't even see. Yeah, helemaal goed. Yeah, helemaal goed. Ze zijn allemaal eerste dan. Ja, inderdaad. Boom, P1. Yeah guys, we did it again. 
Another win in the Tillotson T4 Series Netherlands. Really happy about the result. A little bit of a dodgy situation there in the end with the penalty, but uh, yeah, we managed to do it anyway. Anyways, guys, with that also comes the end to this video. Now, remember, if you enjoyed it, then please consider hitting those like and subscribe buttons. You know, you really help me when you do that. Yeah, it's been going really well lately. Uh, also at the BNL Karting Series, the last round was really good, which is on screen right here. This video, however, is done, and I'll see you all in the next one. Peace. Thank you.